Hello guys, how are you doing today? Hope you're having a, a swell day. You're welcome back to my channel Fun with Physics. Today we're just going to solve some few questions on using pressure in liquid. Okay, we learned this lesson uh, earlier this week and we want to solve some problems that will give us a better understanding of the lesson. Okay, our problem is taken from some of the questions that are taken from a complete physics for Cambridge Secondary 1 by Helen Reynolds. Okay, so if you have the book, can you open to page 157? That's where we're going to take the question. And if you don't have the book, you listen carefully. I'm going to I'm going to say the question out and then we'll solve it together. Okay. Now um Without wasting time, let's quickly put this one down. We'll have physics, page 157. So if you have the test book quickly, you can open to page 157. That's where you have, then our date. That's it. Okay, that's what we have for today. That's, um, where we are going to pick our questions for today, page 157 of the test book, okay? Now the first question says, explain how a hydraulic jerk can be used to lift a car. A hydraulic jerk works basically the same way a simple hydraulic system works. Remember what I told you about the simple design of a hydraulic system? A simple design of, of a hydraulic system is what we have on the screen there. Okay, this is the simple design of a hydraulic system. Okay, so that's the simple design of the system, the hydraulic system. Okay, it basically has a piston connected to a plunger that can move up and down. Okay. Now, when you exert a force on this side of the piston, a small force is going to cause pressure to be produced here. Okay? The pressure will be transmitted in the liquid equally in all direction. Even though I'm writing it in one direction, it should be all direction. Direction of the liquid equally. Okay? Now, notice that the, um, the side here the area here is very small and the area here is very big that's all uh, it, it, when you exert a small um, force here the pressure produced is transmitted to exact a bigger force on this side that's why we call it a force multiplier okay things like jack lift they all operate using this basic uh, principle basic system Okay, so the pressure produced causes a bigger force to be exerted on this side. Okay, this bigger force, this is a small force, small f, or this is a very big force. Okay, now this big force produced here can be used to lift whatever you want to lift. Is that clear? So we can basically write that a small force applied on one side small force applied on one end of the machine causes pressure to be transmitted in a liquid So it will be transmitted in the liquid producing a bigger force at the other side. Producing producing a bigger force. Put the 
same. A bigger force to lift. To lift the car. Okay? At the other end. Okay, don't mind my writing. I'm just trying how to, how to see how I can write it in a way that you understand. Okay, so that's for question number one. All right, so question number two, we have this. Question number two is explain why hydraulic brake uh, is less effective if there is air in the liquid. Now, uh, hydraulic brake also work basically using this simple system. Okay, all hydraulic machines work uh, on the same principle, okay, the same basic principle. Now, if there is air in this space, I think you get to compress it more. Air is, is not, is easily compressed. When you push this force, you get to compress all of the air, so you cannot transmit, the, the pressure transmitted there will not be as, as effective as when you have um, a liquid. So, force, force produced on this side will not be enough to lift whatever you want to lift, okay? So, um, if air is easily compressed, let's put it that way, air is easily compressed, air is easily compressed, so pressure produced, so we don't get to produce, we don't get to produce. force that can lift the car a force that can stop the car okay so if it's a lift a force that can lift the car you don't get to produce a force that can lift the car so the, the, the air is easily compressed okay so let's take that as um, as our answer for question number two. Okay, so let's quickly go to a new plane page for question number three. Question number three is uh, we have uh, we need to solve some problem on hydraulic system. Okay, so the area of the piston. Okay, let's quickly get the hydraulic system once again to guide us in solving. The problem it will help us okay so um, we have the system again oh fix it is fixed up here now the, the set the first question says the area is on piston a on this side the area is two centimeters square so if the area here is two centimeters square and the force is 8 Newton, the force applied here on this side is 8 Newton. Now we should calculate the pressure in the liquid. We should find the pressure produced in the liquid, the pressure that is being transmitted in the liquid equally. We should get the pressure produced that is being transmitted. And then we should find the force that it's used here to lift the item okay that is the force produced in piston B okay if the area is 25 centimeter if this area is 25 centimeter square okay now this is how the that's how the question is if you look at your book you see it. we were given a table to so the area of the piston A is 2 centimeter square and uh, the, the force applied is 8 Newton we should find the pressure, the pressure, the table there, we are left with a blank space and then we are told that the area on the other side is 25 cm square and then we are expected to find the force. The first thing we need to do is to find the pressure here. Remember pressure is force over area, isn't it? That's pressure. So that means the force on this side is 8 Newton and 
the area is 2 okay that will give us that will give us 4 newton right 4 newton per centimeter square isn't it so that's the pressure that's the same pressure is transmitted throughout this liquid so we expect this pressure here on this side to be what the pressure on this side to be 4 newton per centimeter isn't it the pressure on this side here to be 4 newton because that's the pressure that is being transmitted throughout the liquid throughout the fluid isn't it so that's what we expect so in that case we can say that we remember pressure is force times um, if pressure is um, okay remember pressure sorry I need to calculate the force remember force remember force is pressure times area force is pressure times area from our triangle right from our triangle formula and in our triangle formula we have force here we have pressure here and we have area here so we want to calculate force you can say pressure times area okay so we have the pressure is the same pressure that is transmitted which is 4 newton times the area there 25 so what do we have we are gonna have 100 newton as the force produced in that side okay are we good with that equation okay the second one we're giving different options again so if you if you want to quickly pen down this you can quickly do that or review the video take back the video to do that i'm going to just wipe off this and then solve a fresh problem but take note that the same pressure is transmitted in the system okay so that's equal pressure or oh, i need i need a triangle but no problem i've already wiped it off take note equal pressure is transmitted in the system the same pressure is, is transmitted in the system the same pressure is transmitted now the second question says the area here is five five centimeter square five centimeter sorry five centimeter square and the area here is um we're given 20 centimeter square okay then we're told that the force applied on this side is 20 newton 20 newton force is applied and we expect to calculate this force applied on this end okay another alternative you can use to solve this formula is to use your f1 over a1 equals to f2 over a2 it's an alternative formula you can use all right uh, there's a slight shift in this so let me take it back move it slightly to fit in good perfect okay now um let's solve first of all we need to find the pressure we need to find the pressure remember pressure is force over area so we can say it's 20 over 5 which will give us 4 newton per centimeter square okay that's the pressure isn't it so that's the same pressure that is transmitted throughout so for us to get the force on this side to get the force on this side we see force equals the pressure times area from our triangle formula i'm going to leave this triangle formula this time around i have my force pressure and area right so force pressure times area okay for my triangle formula so that means the pressure there which is 4 newton times the force there 20 will give me times um, the area which is 20 we give me 80 newton the pressure here is 4 newton per centimeter square okay so this is what i expect now for the third one i want you guys to use the same step use the same idea to solve question number three i've already solved um question room on figure one two you're going to solve three on your own okay if you have the test book all right now if you have the test book uh, these are the parameters it's very simple and straightforward but this time around you have decimal values oh let's make let me quickly put the parameters so that you know what i mean now these are the parameters i'm talking about here we're told the area is 0 
zero one. Sorry. Zero point zero one meter square. Okay. Uh, we're told that the force is applied here is six newton, and we are expected to find the force here. And we're told that the area here is zero point zero one. 0.01 the area of this piston this bigger piston here is 0.01 meter or rather 0.1 meter square so the area here is 0.1 meter square so here we have 0.1 meter square so if we take the same step the same step the same procedure to solve the problem okay use the same procedure look at all your screen what you have on the screen is how the question here. So use the same step to solve the problem. Are we good? Now let's move to a fresh page, a new page to solve the last question. Question number four. Question number four says a student pushes down with a force of two newton on the plunger. Okay, let me revert back, take it back to this. I think I'm going to use this to answer the question. Pushes back with a force of uh, two newton on the plunger of a syringe A, this time around it's a syringe, but they work basically in the same principle, okay? Let's assume that this is how it's designed, okay? Now, the, he pushes back with a force of 2 Newton on the side. 2 Newton. On the plunger of a syringe A. Syringe B has a plunger with an area of three, but that is three times the area of the plunger A. What is the force produced on plunger B? Okay. Now, what the question is saying is, we have a plunger A and we have this B. Okay. And someone pushes down with on this one with the force of two newton. Now, what force will be applied here? If the area here is three times whatever is the area here. Okay. Now, we are not given this area here, but we can take the area here to be a unit so that we can take it to be one meter square if you want you can take it to be a unit so anytime you're not given something you can assume it to be a unit if you like but depending on the set circumstance okay or to be an unknown value so we can give it a unit one meter square okay and they said the area here is three times so one times three of course it's going to be three meters square so what is the force producing? Without wasting time, the force is going to be uh, the multiple of this uh, 3 times 2 here, which is 6 Newton. But we can still solve it out to, 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 to know if you want. So one way you can do that is to get the pressure here. The pressure on this side is force over area, which is 2 over 1, which is 2 Newton per meter square. Okay, it's the same pressure that is transmitted in this system to generate a bigger force. So in that case, the force here is going to be pressure times area from our triangle formula, which is 2, the pressure times the area, which is 3, and then that gives us 6 Newton, okay? Now, if you don't want to use this method to solve, just like what we did before, the method we're using, I told you guys that you can use an alternative formula. You can use an alternative formula to solve. So this is three meters squared. That's all. You can use an alternative, and this is alternative formula: F one over A one equals to F two over A two. Okay. So if you're looking for F two. You're going to call this one F two that you're looking for. This is F one, which is two. Two, and the A1 is 1 so the F2 is what I'm looking for and the A2 is 3 okay so the other is multiply that gives me F2 to be 2 times 3 which is 6 Newton okay are we good guys these are what we're expected to do I think this will help us to understand the concept better okay it will help us to understand that a core pressure is being transmitted in this kind of system. Do we have any question?
you have any question go to google classroom and comment on the section the question question section okay i will i will attempt to your question in no time thank you